I have seen people boycott, leave social media and Facebook for years. And it always saddens me when I see it for a couple of reasons. One is that I am usually correct in guessing that they will be back uh, and they usually do come back. Uh, but even if they don't come back, the social media platform loses something, uh, loses a valuable voice, loses a meaningful contributor. And basically, and the other reason why it's so sad is because that person who leaves social media is essentially deplatforming themselves. They're canceling themselves because social media at this time is the main place for society's attention. It's how culture, how people communicate with each other, right? We don't write, we don't rarely mail physical letters anymore. We don't call people up randomly anymore. Maybe a few of you still do that. And a lot of people don't even check their email messages on a regular basis, but they still check social media regularly. Now, here's the thing. Um, some of you might think that I'm tone deaf to be talking about this right now because Facebook is currently going through um, one of their toughest periods of you know, PR in their history. A lot of hate for Facebook right now. Um, there are major news organizations that have combined together to basically take down Facebook because of the Facebook whistleblowers. Um, Facebook is uh, Instagram is bad for teenage girls. Uh, Facebook is bad for democracy. Facebook is terrible for privacy. I get it. It's cool to hate on Facebook. Let's just be honest with you. It's socially acceptable right now not to be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> It's socially cool, and you're smarter, you're more ethical right now. If you if you if you say Facebook is evil, I'm, you know, if you use Facebook, you're reluctantly doing it. It's cool to do. It's cool to do all that right now. But here's the thing: it doesn't matter. Let's just be perfectly honest. I'm gonna just be honest. You leave social media. What kind of a difference does that make? Okay, let me let's talk this through. Okay. You leave social media, you think you're making a splash for, for, and then you make a splash for like three weeks and then we forget about you. Oh, so-and-so left social media. Wow, so brave, so bold. They're going to try to build their business. And by the way, I'm speaking to most of you who are business, uh, self-employed or small business owners. You're shooting yourself in the foot if you leave social media. So, okay, oh my God, you're so brave. You're so ethical. You're so principled. And you leave social media. And then we praise you for, we praise you on social media for a couple of days, a couple of weeks at most. And then we forget about you. And then what? And then you're probably going to come back in like, you know, three months, six months, because you realize you're, you've shot yourself in the foot or that you, how else, how, how are you going to build your business without social media? Please, somebody tell me below, how are you going to build your business without social media? Yeah, sure, you can. Of course, you can build your, oh, you're going to get, you're going to email, you're going you're gonna to go back to email. What are you going to do? Text messages? What are you going to do? You're going to email your friends to please refer you some business. You're going to email your friends your newest article. You know, by not being on social media, you also have less incentive to write. You have less incentive to make content, right? So what are you going to do now? You're going to rely on your email newsletter. Oh, George, email newsletter is the only way we're really reliably reaching our audience. Is that right? Yeah, they've, I've heard that ever since 2009 when I started my business. Build your email list. Okay, folks, that's really old school knowledge. Let me explain why that's outdated. Okay, so email, email list building used to be cool and really important from 2009 to, I would say, probably mid-2010s. It was still a cool thing to talk about email list building and how important that was. And then people started noticing, oh, um, people don't even check their emails much anymore, or they got over, overrun with email newsletters they subscribe to. And of course, you know, email softwares like Gmail and everything, they're now placing email newsletters in different promotions folders, updates folders, spam folder. 
And so email became less and less reliable over time as a way to keep in touch with people. But also here's the thing, I have an email newsletter too. Of course I do. It's just like everybody who says, oh, I build my business from word of mouth. Word of mouth is the most important uh, channel for marketing. You don't know what you're talking about. Everybody has word of mouth. Are you kidding me? Everybody has word of mouth. I have word of mouth too, except my word of mouth is greatly amplified because of social media, because what, what's the easiest way for you to spread the word about me? By sharing my content. By even simply the fact that you like this video, your word of mouth making it more likely that some of your friends are seeing this video right now. But, but if you like it, if you comment on it, you make it a little bit even more likely that some of your friends see it. If you share it, obviously you make that even more likely. So word of mouth as the main way of building business is such, it's, it's, it's not, it, it's unwise marketing advice because everybody gets word of mouth. That's baseline for every single business in the world. Even somebody with no audience, at least they're, <laughs> their family member, their friends are trying to tell other people about their business. Word of mouth is normal. It's just that with social media, word of mouth is amplified a hundred times, a thousand times. It's so much easier. And email list is normal too. Everyone has, everyone who, who does any kind of marketing has some kind of email list. Some of you don't, I know, because you probably, you, you realize you, you could actually build a business without email list. Why? Well, I have a whole other video about that, but email list is one of multiple channels that would be wise for you to be reaching your audience. Some of you are subscribed to my email newsletter, of course, but you also see me on social media. And that's, that's, that means I am more top of mind for you because you see me in these multiple places. So the person who is leaving social media, they seem really brave, principled, and cool for like three weeks. And then we forget about them, sadly. I mean, we, I want to remember them. I want to think about them. I want to refer them business, but I don't remember them because I don't see them on social media on a regular basis anymore. They're deplatforming themselves. It's silly. George, George, you haven't gotten to the fact that Facebook is evil. It's bad for democracy. It's bad for privacy. And it's bad. Instagram and Facebook are bad for, for kids. All right, let's talk about that, shall we? Okay. So if you're going to say that Facebook is bad and evil, then why is it that they frequently feature articles that say that they're bad and evil? Let me show you, uh, I mean, I, I, I just, for the past couple of weeks, especially since, um, you know, Facebook has been so, so bad in the news lately, for the past couple of weeks, I have been noticing articles, because I serve Facebook uh, news, just like many of you do, and for the past couple of weeks, every time I log on to Facebook, news item, the, the, the menu, okay, on my phone, it's telling me how bad Facebook is. Okay, let me, let me, that's just one screenshot. Let me give you another screenshot. I was like, I was like, I was genuinely shocked. Like, I was like, I'm like, wow, Facebook isn't censoring the articles about them being evil. So what does that mean? Either they're stupid and they're, and they're, they're, they're not on top of it, or they are simply giving the people what they want. Because I, I am interested in Facebook news. Of course I am, because Facebook is such a big part of my marketing channels. I'm really curious what's going on with the company and the PR that's happening. So I tend to click on news articles regarding Facebook, the company. And so Facebook knows that. And so Facebook is now uh, you know, giving me articles all the time as part of, I haven't even clicked through to the news section and they're already showing showcasing to me the why Mark Zuckerberg is evil and why Facebook is terrible for society. Let me show you another example. Um, this is the top of when I click through to the to the Facebook news okay tool. This was the top article. It's an unflattering picture of Mark Zuckerberg and you know talking about how terrible you know Facebook is. Okay. Um, I could show you example after example, but let me, let me move on here. So Facebook and social media, let's, let's, let's be really clear what social media, how they win. How are they getting society's attention? How are they so addicting? You know why? Well, let me ask you, why is uh, 
junk food addicting? Why, is, why are video games addicting? Because they give you what you want. So whose responsibility is it when you get addicted? Are you going to just blame it on everybody else? Are you going to blame it on big tech, that you're addicted to big tech, that you can't stop scrolling? Sure, of course, big tech has some responsibility, but so do you. Who has more responsibility in, 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 in the case when you are addicted to social, when anybody is addicted to social? Now, when kids are addicted to social media and their self-esteem is being um, shaped by Instagram likes and you know, Instagram images, whose fault is it? Well, kids, you can't blame them. Their, their, their brains are not developed yet to make wise decisions. So what about their parents then? Some parents prohibit their kids from using social media. Some parents have that kind of relationship with their kids where their kids, you know, well, I, I'm, now, I'm not going to say that, you know, of course, some kids are harder to parent than other kids. Um, but still, I think the parents have a big responsibility when kids become addicted to anything. Do you let your kids get addicted to drugs, hard drugs? Any drugs, really? Do you let your kids get addicted to video games? Do you, get, do you let your kids get addicted to fill in the blank junk food? Do you let them just eat whatever ice cream and you know, junk food that they want? Probably not, right? You're very careful about that. So why aren't you more careful about how they're using their technology? And I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying that, you know. by the way, same thing with, with yourself. If you are letting yourself get addicted to anything, then perhaps you have the responsibility and an opportunity to parent yourself a little better. Now, social media, do they have, do they have, uh, do, do we, the government need to set policy uh, on them to, you know, be more um, censoring of certain information, misinformation, disinformation to uh, prevent, you know, kids from getting addicted and prevent us from getting addicted and protect our privacy and all that? Probably. Now, if you are going to boycott social media and not share that information on social media, guess who wins? Actually, nobody wins because social media loses you as a, as a customer um, and society loses you as a voice on social media because that's where society is reading everything. But George, George, everyone's leaving Facebook though. Don't, didn't you know that? I hear all my friends are leaving Facebook. Oh, really? Is that right? Okay, well, let's take a look, okay? Let's take a look at this. You think everyone's leaving Facebook, and let me go ahead and show you the actual data. Do you care about data? <laughs> I hope you do. Let me show it to you. Facebook worldwide usage. Just Google it. Go to Google, search this yourself. Facebook worldwide usage, and let's click on Statist. Stat I don't know how to pronounce it. Statista, which is a, a well-known, respected uh, source of, of data. Okay, all right. Let's look at this. Do you see everyone leaving social media? It's ridiculous to say that, come on. Are, are people leaving social media? No, they're not. Now, when did the major Facebook scandals begin? Late 2015 through 2016, part of 2017, Cambridge analytical scandals were happening around this time. So let me just zoom in at this time to see if anyone left social media. Did social media slow, did Facebook usage slow down? No, it kept growing during the Cambridge Analytica scandals. Look at this, kept growing from 1.2 you know, billion in the Q4, Q1 of 2014, all the way to Q2, 2.23 billion. Okay, all right, now let's, let's reset the zoom. And what about now, these days? Now we've only got data up to second quarter, but look at, look at now of course pandemic is gonna help social media, but look at this. Social media, Facebook usage has, has now almost 3 billion internet users worldwide, which is basically most internet users because there's 4.3 billion internet users worldwide. And most of them use Facebook at least once a month. The fact, I'm gonna guess that you use Facebook at least once a month, okay? So most of you anyway. Now, um, 
So let's let's a couple things. One, I still haven't talked about how Facebook is evil for democracy. Come on. Okay. Do you have any thought leaders, activists, politicians you admire? Most of you who are, you know, hating on Facebook, there are two camps hating on Facebook. The the left and the right, basically. <laughs> okay. Both liberals and conservatives hate Facebook, but they all use it. Everybody uses it. But everyone, it's so cool to talk about Facebook badly. Okay. So the liberals say that Facebook isn't censoring enough of the conservatives. The conservatives hate Facebook because Facebook is censoring them. The far left is hate Facebook because hate Facebook censors some of the language around whiteness and racial justice and, and privilege and all that stuff. Facebook censors some of that because whatever. Facebook also censors the, the, the far right in terms of you know, vaccines and all that, all that stuff, all that talk. So everyone, it's cool to hate on Facebook. And yet there are still people who champion racial justice, who champion vaccine hesitancy. They're still on Facebook when they learn how to use different language to talk about it. Because I, I actually have friends on both sides and I know that they use different language to talk about these things effectively on Facebook, despite the censorship. And then, of course, there are plenty of people on both sides who say Facebook is not censoring enough because it's bad for, you know, by, being, by not censoring enough information, Facebook is bad for democracy. Let's talk about this. Okay. Are you going to help that cause by leaving Facebook? Or the alternative, you stay on Facebook, you learn to use it with good boundaries. We haven't even talked on, on that, but I'll talk about that later. You can either leave Facebook or you can stay on Facebook, learn how to self, learn self-control and use it with good boundaries and therefore benefit your business hugely for the long term, okay? And even for the short term. So you can either leave and have your voice be lost or you can stay and champion the causes that you care about and, of course, champion your business. What's, what's going to be your choice? Please don't tell me you're going to leave Facebook. It is an, an irrational and it, please convince me why you're leaving Facebook. You're, you're leaving Facebook for two reasons. Political reasons, because you, can't, you, haven't, you haven't sat down and thought, the people who are using Facebook that believe in my politics how are they doing it to champion the cause? Let me look at what language they're using so we don't get censored. Let's do it. Let's continue championing the causes we believe in. Okay, I think that's, a, that's, that's the real principled move. But you might say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving Facebook as a principled move to, to not support Facebook. Your you're, you're leaving is a drop in the bucket and it's gonna make no difference. Well, my leaving encourages other people to leave, but yeah, all of you are gonna come back, most of you. I bet you, let me, let's do a pinky bet that you're going to come back in three, three months, six months, or three years, whatever, but you're going to be back. Okay. Cause I see everybody leave. I, I've, I've, see, I've been on Facebook now since 2006. I've seen so many of my good friends leave, come back, leave, come back, principal leave prince, and come back and shame principal leave, whatever. And they realize that, oh my gosh, I can't champion my causes without why am I, why am I deplatforming myself? It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. Now, if you say, well, champ, Facebook is backward democracy, then go on Facebook and talk about that. They're not going to censor you. Just like I showed you just earlier, scroll back in this video, Facebook allows mainstream media articles attacking them as front page news on Facebook. They're not going to censor you on that. They welcome it because they want, guess what they want? Let me just be really clear. Facebook gives you what you want. Facebook gives everybody what they want. So if you want news that hates on Facebook, they will show you news that hates on Facebook. If you want news that champion your, your political beliefs, they will show that to you. That's why it's bad for democracy. It splits up nations and, and whatever, because it's giving people what they want. Whose fault is that? It's everybody's fault. I get it. But people are so disconnected from their own responsibility. I think it's just ridiculous. If you get... If, you, it's your, it's, you, it's everybody's job to be mindful of what kinds of news articles they're clicking on social media, right? Why are we just outsourcing, oh, they're feeding me this, they're feeding me that. 
you can choose something different on the menu. You go to the restaurant and the restaurant, you know, features this special and that special. You don't have to buy that. You can buy, they're featuring, you know, fried chicken and you could buy the salad. Yes. And guess what? The more you, 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 you go to a restaurant, you buy the salad instead of the, the, assuming that's what you, that's healthier for you, whatever. Okay. And just assume salad is better for you than fried chicken. All right. You keep buying the salad. The restaurant is not going to change their specials because the restaurant is going to keep selling fried. But social media is different. If you keep choosing the salad, social media is going to show you the salad more often because social, the social media menu is individualized to you. The algorithm learns what you, what you want and gives you more of it. That's why it's addictive. That's how it gets you to come back. And that's how, if you keep coming back, that's how they make money because then they could show you advertisements. And by the way, if you, if you don't click on advertisements, they won't sh they'll show you less of those advertisements. The ones that you engage with, I'm hoping if you see my Facebook ads, you probably engage with that in some way, they'll show you more of my ads. And you know my ads, I'm trying to do, do good in society and bring authentic marketing, et cetera. So two reasons why people leave Facebook, you might be tempted to leave Facebook. Well, I guess three reasons now. Again. One is political discontent. Don't leave for that reason. You should stay here and champion your cause. Any, any political leader or activist you think of, if they left Facebook, Facebook, your cause would be poorer on Facebook. People are still going to use Facebook. Like I showed you, people are still going to use Facebook. It's never gone down. It's continued to go up. It's the trend is going to keep going because social media is really smart. They have all the data of how people engage and they're going to keep making sure it's addictive. They're going to keep making sure it's addictive. Society is not going to stop using it because you principled stance, you stop using it. That's ridiculous. They're going to keep making it addictive for everybody. And you're going to you know, slink back three to six months to three years later, right? Come on. So if you, if you don't like the politics, champion your politics on Facebook. If, you, if, if, if because you're stopping social media, because you have boundaries issues, you, you can't stop scrolling, who's, okay. You can't stop scrolling social media. So what do you do? You can either delete it from your phone or you can use it as a spiritual practice. Yeah, knowing that it's good for your business. Let's establish that. Social media is good for your business, okay? Number one. Number two is you can't stop scrolling. So why don't you learn every time before you use social media, set a timer for 10 minutes or three minutes. It's easy. Don't you have a timer with you at all times on your phone or on the internet, on Google, if you're using social media on your computer, just, just Google 10-minute timer real quick and it'll pull up, it'll pull up a 10-minute timer. Try it. It'll pull up a 10-minute timer. Like, let me show you real quick. If I use social media on my, on my computer, I just first, I, the first thing I do is Google 10-minute timer. Okay, cool. All right, the timer has begun. Now let me go and use social media. And when the timer stops, I stop. When the timer stops, you, you stop what you're doing, you get up, you stretch, and then you move on with your day. Guess what you've just done? You've just practiced self-control and you've become a little bit more uh, better at keeping boundaries with yourself. Isn't that a better practice than just leaving social media, even though social media is good for your business? Okay, so one, one, one thing about, okay, you, you end the scroll. The other reason people leave social media due to boundaries is because they get pressure thinking, I don't want, I can't respond to all this, these notifications. That's also because you don't know how to use social media. Please let me teach you how to use social media. You put your phone on do not disturb. My phone is in constantly, my phone, I turn on do not disturb for, on my phone a long time ago and it's never come off. Yes, my phone is, is permanently on do not disturb. Now my phone is able to get, say do not disturb except for phone calls from mom or whatever. I, I'm able to set that and you got to look it up on your phone. Your phone is able to do that too. You just got to look it up. Okay, so put your phone permanently on do not disturb. Okay, except for calls from your, you know, your spouse or, or you know, important certain important notifications that you want, whatever. And secondly, ignore the notifications. You're not, you got to learn to stop people pleasing so much on social media, right? Like that's, that's also your opportunity. If you feel pressured by all the notifications, it's because you don't realize that it's because of your people pleasing nature and you can learn how to practice not pleasing people so much and just 
10 minutes on social media, I'm just going to do 10 minutes. And my focus is on just going through the important notifications. And then after 10 minutes, whatever I can do, I stop and I just, I don't care about the rest. Yes, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to not respond to my comments, my messages. Yes, I give you that permission. And everybody gives you that permission too. Stop people pleasing. It's, 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 social media is good practice for your boundaries of, of tech addiction. And it's good for your boundaries on people pleasing. Why would you remove that practice from your life, right? It's because you didn't realize that practice was available to you, but now you do. And then the third reason why people leave social media is because it's cool to leave social media. It's, it's just, you know, it's hate. Facebook is hated. People like me who are cringeworthy continue to promote social media and use social media. I don't care about being cringeworthy. I don't care about being uncool because I know it's good for business and I know it's good for causes that I champion messages that I think are worthwhile. And the main cause I champion is that good people like you have messages and presence that is worth seeing. That's the main cause I champion in social media. I want you to, to have the visibility that your message and your presence deserves. The people that could really benefit from what you do, they need you here on Facebook, on Instagram on Twitter, on YouTube, whatever social media that you want to, you know, that are po popular being demonized these days. And it, it, I've, I've said so many times, oh, social media is good for business. George, can you show us what do you mean social media is good for business? Let me just give you a quick example, all right? Quick example, and I probably should stop the video once this timer ends. Social media is the easiest way to do market testing. And I thank uh, Brigitte and Liesel and Julie for giving me permission to share these links with you all. So these are, uh, they, they, they took my class on market research and I'm just gonna show you real quick this example. How, how much, how else is it this easy to get feedback? Okay, Brigitte asked researching about what stops people from cooking at home, blah, 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 blah. And then look, She's now able to reach out to all these people to, to say more. I mean, this, is, this all happened within a few days of her posting this. It's so much easier to do research. Um, Lisa asked about um, you know, sensitive introverts. And if you feel that way, gosh, look, look, at, look at all this response, okay? Um, uh, Julie asked about dealing with grief, especially during holidays. You know, look, look at the responses she's getting, right? And I mean, and I'm sure lots of people emailed her or message her privately on social media because some people don't wanna talk about that. There is no easier way to get market research from the people you know, that, that's in your audience than from using Facebook posts like this or Instagram posts, okay? Now, social media, last thing I'll say is this, social media means news from the people that you care about, the new people and brands that you care about. Why would you, not want to receive the news from the people and brands that you care about. It's because you don't know how to use social media. You, you, you go on social media and you, you, you're still following a bunch of people and brands that you don't care about. So why don't you stop following them? Why don't you un, go, to, go to social and unfollow me if you want. I, I, I just want you to use social media correctly. You go to social media, you go, go to the feed, and then the, some, if, if you see something you don't care about from somebody you don't care about, unfollow them. Just unfollow them. They won't know. You don't have to unfriend them. You can if you want. I unfriend people. I, I, I offend people all, all the time, and whatever. I'm sorry. But I'm using social media, Facebook only for my clients and for my affiliates, and I, have, I unfriend just about everybody else. And some people have gotten offended. It's great. All right. I don't care. I, I do care, but I'm sorry that you got offended. It's not my fault that you got offended because I don't use social media in the way that you want, right? So but just unfollow. People won't know you unfollow them. Got it? So unfollow all the ones you don't care about, and then you'll be left with the ones you do care about, meaning you actually go to social media. It's a good experience because you actually want to see those things. It uplifts your life in some way. It allows you to stay in connection with the people and brands you care about. So please, I think this is enough, and I think my timer has probably run out by this point. Uh, I have three more minutes left, but it's <laughs> the bottom line is that I genuinely hope that you will buck the trend of cool people leaving social media and be uncool like me.
and, and still use social media for, and knowing that the few po cool people leaving social media is not the majority of society who you could reach, right? There's still lots of cool people who stay. Most cool people are staying. A few of the cool people you hear about, that's the, the, the nature of the human mind is we hear about a few negative things and we remember them. Look, oh, George, I heard everybody's leaving social media. No, no, you, don't, you didn't hear that. You only heard a few people in, in your mind play trick on you thinking it's everybody. No, most of the cool people you know are staying on social media. The few cool people you kept in your mind because the negativity, a few negative things keep in the human mind. That's how our brains have evolved. We remember a few negativity, forgetting the mass positivity, right? So, I say the, pe the cool people leaving social media, I'm sorry for your business and for your visibility and the fact that I'm not gonna remember you as well. I'm sorry, I hope you'll come back. And for the rest of us who are willing to be uncool, okay, continue to use social media to champion your causes and, and, to, and to use it as a mindfulness practice for keeping boundaries to how much you scroll and for keeping boundaries on your people-pleasing activity. I hope this is helpful. I hope I've made a bit of a case for why you might want to stay and be uncool like me. Um, I, I find facetious because I actually think that this is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. It's the ethical thing to do. Yeah, please debate me. I don't, I don't get it. Those of you who are saying it's unethical, I don't genuinely don't get it. Your choice is to leave and not have your voice be heard. I don't get it. Okay, so um, stay and learn how to use it with boundaries and learn how to use it to be visible to the people who could refer you business. So I hope this helps. I look forward to your comments and your questions and um, I wish you well. Take care.